Hello, good day, and welcome back to my channel. So today we will be having just a short discussion. We will not be doing a Bible study today. We will just be doing a discussion. And as the title suggests, I am thanking my viewers thus far who have who 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 had, who have followed me up until this point on my channel. Those individuals you know yourself who have been faithful in giving me a listening ear, in liking my videos and in subscribing to my channel and, share, and, and sharing my videos, I must say to you that I truly thank you all for doing such. And I appreciate every one of you, but most of all, I thank you for your patience. I know that if you are a non-Adventist following this channel and if you are not if you are not biblical rounded, I know many things that I discussed on this channel will be hard for you to understand, right? For it will be teachings that you are not acquainted with, right? These are teachings that are unique to Seventh-day Adventists only, such as the investigative judgment and so on, right? And I know it must have been struggling to understand several things that I said in this video, hence why I'm thanking you all for my patience. Now, on the way forward, I'll be embracing new topics, new subjects, right? That is not unique to Adventism, right? But are matters of contention within the body of Christ and in Christendom on a whole, right? I've dealt with the distinctives of Adventis, Adventism already. So now I'm going to look at other subjects that is not unique to them alone. However, these are things that would be considered, many of which would be considered unorthodox or non-essential to the Christian faith or simply unbiblical. Right? Now, the title of this video, as suggests, is a thank you to my viewers and not only that, an intro to the new subjects that I will be addressing. Right? Now, on it you see an intro to the law and the covenants right now there will be many there will be other subjects that will be discussed that has no relation whatsoever to the law per se right these are stuff such as how one should dress you know when 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 going to church or dress on a whole in particular as Christians now um, aside from that we'll be looking at jewelry can a Christian wear jewelry? Can a Christian wear, you know, use makeup and, you know, lipstick and these kind of things? These are not things that you'll find in the law, but they are matters of contention within the body of Christ itself, right? So I'll be dealing with subjects such as those. I'm just giving examples, you know. There are more that has no bearing within the law itself. That is the Torah or Old Covenant. But there are matters of contention either but either because of some things that are said in the new testament which may have been misinterpreted or simply things that things that um men see um, things that men see as things that are wrong it may not even be something that is in in the new testament or in all the bible right but people see it as wrong things and let me give you an example the whole aspect of sex right there are some Christians who are kind of hung up on many aspects of, of, of this now the Bible is silent completely silent of of sex on a whole the only thing that the Bible says is that that the that the that they that they um that the bed is undefiled right but fornicators and adulterers God will judge so we know from scripture that fornication is a sin that is sex outside of wedlock and adultery and faithfulness to one's spouse we know that those are a sin right we know that incest is a sin from 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 the Bible and we know that bestiality is a sin right um, however the Bible is silent where sex in the marriage is concerned Right, so that's what I mean when I say there are some things that is not in the Bible any at all, but it's, it is a matter of contention. 
right so all of these subjects will be discussed speaking in tongues right that's in the new testament it's not in the law the torah or old covenant so these are things that will be discussed baptism formula you know whether one should get baptized in the name of father son holy spirit or in the name of jesus only right what else the doctrine of god is god a triune god is he is he just is it just one single being who is god as as pentecostals and apostolics would say you know is is is, is christ to be worshipped you no know, jehovah's witness believe that he shouldn't they believe that he's a created being so we'll be looking at the nature of god and the nature of christ right the nature of man right and just about everything you, you could possibly think of right just about everything but the first thing that we will be discussing right which is a part of the title of this video that is the law and the covenants now there are things that pertains to the law and the covenants that is the sabbath food and drink various festivals and and, and 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 so forth right these are contained in the law or the torah so what we want to know if as christians are we still expected to keep the sabbath are we still expected to celebrate the fe the various feasts and so forth that are in the bible are we expected to follow the uh, the dietary laws of the old testament our old covenant right that's the first thing that we'll be looking at from henceforth right now that being said i want to have a a, a, a little a little um quick recap on what we have learned thus far since my video has started where seven day adventist is concerned right it's necessary for me to bring out what you would have learned my viewer my viewers thus far so that you can understand better the nature of cults or new religious movements you will be able to understand and identify when 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 a church is is to be properly considered as a cult or cultic right whether it comes under the umbrella of new religious movements right now before i even begin my 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 study on the law and the covenants there are two videos that i'll have you watch before i start that subject of the law and the covenants one of the video the first video will entitled is the sda church a cult or not right now as i would have mentioned in my first four videos right my first four videos right on my journey in leaving adventism and why i started a ministry on cults you would have heard me mention that the seventh day adventist church is seen as a part of the evangelical circle of churches by many as a former Adventist, I'm telling you that it is not one of us. They are not one of us. They are not evangelicals. Right? They are properly cultic. They should be regarded as a cult, a non-Christian cult. Right? So in my next video, I am going to demonstrate, right, and give you practical reasons why the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church should be rightly viewed as a cult. Right? Now let me make a disclaimer, I have nothing, I've said before, I have nothing against the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Right, I have to always stress that. Regardless of my experience with them, I have nothing against them. I have no hatred whatsoever towards them. It is because I love them while I exercise patience with them. For some time they can be very mean, rude and disrespectful. You know, they, they, sometimes they really get on my nerves, I should tell you. You understand? Towards them. You understand? I'm stressing on this because I want you to understand that I don't hate the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But there comes a times when, as a Christian, you have to be honest. 
you have to you have to hurt people's feelings unfortunately sometimes as a Christian you have to tell the truth even it is even if it hurts the Seventh-day Adventist Church it is not a legitimate Christian church it is a cult a counterfeit Christian church or new religious movement which is the other name for cult right and so my my next video after this will show i'll demonstrate looking at all the marks of a cult i'll show you that none of them can possibly miss the seventh day adventist church it is not only a cult in doctrine but it's a cult in practice and behavior their systems and way of doing things is cultic and that's what i'm going to show in my next video in my video after that i'll explain the thing that i hate the most with cults right I'll, I'll do a video entitled that the thing that i hate the most with cults i see it essential right to 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 do a video like like like, like that and you'll see why when the video when 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 when, when i upload it now with that being said let us have a, a, a look now on what we have learned thus far on my videos of adventism teachings now you'll realize that what we have learned is going to be um, something common that you'll find with these new religious movements are cults and you're going to see some of the same things that we have learned so far occurring in my other videos of adventism teachings and the law and other subjects it's like a chain you'll find the same the same problem right throughout right and um in order to express this problem that this thing that that you would have realized thus far on studying adventism teaching i'm going to read something from a book you have heard me mention this book before kingdom of the cults written by dr walter martin in the chapter chapter two that is called scaling the language barrier reading from paragraph paragraph three onwards it reads writing it reads right writing in eternity magazine the noted theologian dr bernard rams calls attention calls attention to this particular fact when evaluating this the theological system of the late dr tillick leading theological luminary of our day and former professor of theology at the university of chicago's divinity school dr ram charges that tillich has so radically redefined standard theological terms that the effect upon christian theology is nothing short of cataclysmic cataclysmic yeah such biblical notions such biblical notions of sin guilt damnation justification regeneration etc all come out retranslated into a language that is foreign to the meaning of these concepts in the scriptures themselves so the writer here is saying that biblical notions as as these that was mentioned they are completely retranslated into a language that is foreign to the meaning of a uh, foreign to the meaning of these concepts in the scriptures themselves and you'll realize that is the same thing you find with adventism thus far i'm going to continue reading dr ram is is quite right in his observation for any student of paul Felix theology and for that matter the theology of contemporary neoliberalism -liber and neo-orthodoxy will concede immediately that in the theological framework of these two systems of thought the vocabulary of what has been rightly termed by dr edward Carn carnal as carnal as classical orthodoxy undergoes what can only be termed radical redefinition just how this is effected is worthy of another chapter but no one no one informed on the subject seriously question that this is what has occurred it is therefore possible for the modern theologian to use the terminology of the bible and his historical theology but in an entirely different sense from that intended by the writers of scripture let me repeat it is therefore possible 
for modern theologians to use the terminology of the Bible and historical theology, but in an entirely different sense from that intended by the writers of Scripture. You have seen that thus far, and my, my, my refutations and Adventist teachings, right? They have used the terms and so forth, but in an entirely different sense from what from, from what the what was intended by the writers of scripture Pauls capitalized on almost total on the almost total inability of the average christian to understand the subtle art of redefinition in the realm of biblical theology human nature being what it is it is only natural that christian ministers as well as laymen should desire a pan panacea to the irritating and at times frustrating problem of cult terminology. Unfortunately, however, no such panacea exists. But lest we become discouraged that the prospect of facing that the prospect of facing the ever multiplying bodies of non-Christian cults unprepared for this conflict. Make no and make no mistake, this is spiritual conflict. Proper uses of de definition as a practical tool will rob the cultist of at least two of his advantage, and that is surprise and confusion. So what the writer here is saying is that what you must do with dealing with a cult, you must always ask them what they mean. For yes, they will say that they, are, they agree with what you're saying, they believe what you believe, but you will realize that they mean something entirely different from what you will mean. So if you ask the ask a cult that they believe that Jesus is God, like for example, you ask that a Jehovah Witness, do you believe that Jesus is God? They will say, yes, he is God, but he is not the Almighty God. So you believe that Jesus is God, you know, he believes that Jesus is God as well, but for him, Jesus is a little God compared to the Father. Another example, ask a, ask a Seventh day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness, do, uh, again, you believe that Jesus is God? Yes, but they also believe that Jesus was an angel as well. You see what I'm saying? Do you believe, do you, uh, this is just an example, you know, do you believe that we are saved by grace through faith alone? They will, Adventists will tell you that, yes, you are saved by grace through faith alone. However, you will realize that you have to keep the law as well in order to obtain salvation to make it into heaven so they say yes they agree with you that we are saved without the law outside of the law but you'll realize you'll soon realize you know they'll say yes they agree with you on that but you'll soon realize that even though you and, you and the person agree that you are saved through by grace through faith without the law you'll realize that you still have to keep the law in order for, to get final salvation you see how contradictory it is? So they are going to say, yes, they agree with you. But they mean something entirely different from you. For, for you have it to say that, yes, we save without the law, so we don't need to keep the law in order to get to heaven. But Adventists is going to say, yes, we believe that we are saved without the law, but yet still, you still have to keep the law to be saved. Essentially, essentially, you still have to keep it to be saved. So this is what the writer is saying. They, 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 they use the same terminology, but it is being redefined by them. It, is, it, is un, it, it, it undergoes drastic redefinition. Right? Drastic redefinition is, 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 is the result of, 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 of what the cultists do with the things, the things of Scripture. Now I'm going to read another, another, another paragraph for you. Where he's talking about the riddle of semantics. Right? Won't read everything from it, just one paragraph. This is what he says The average non Christian cult owes its very existence to the fact that it has utilized the terminology of Christianity, has borrowed liberally from the Bible, almost always out of context, which is put which is put which he put in open and close bracket. Right? So he, they have borrowed liberally from the Bible, however, almost always out of context, and sprinkled its format with evangelical cliches and terms wherever possible are advantageous. Up to now, this has been a highly successful attempt to represent their respective system of thought as Christian. 
So they masquerade as Christians, right? By taking the, the, the terminology of the Christian faith, right? However, they, they take them completely out of context, redefine it, and make it according to the format of their own theology and way of thinking. This is what the writer Dr. Walter Martin and his book Kingdom of the Cult is saying. And if you have, if you have checked out my videos thus far, you will see that Seventh-day Adventist is guilty of this very thing. Like for example, on my study on the bridegroom theory, right? This is just an example, you know. You will realize that they use Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 22, you understand? And, and, and Malachi, I believe it's chapter 3. I believe, yes, I believe it's Malachi, Malachi chapter 3 or 4, one of them, right? In explaining the whole bridegroom theory. And you see how they take them out of context. If you have watched my video, you would have seen how easily I refuted them by simply taking the passages that they use into context. Read my study on, on the book of Hebrews and the investigative judgment. You will find dozens of redefinitions and passages all taken out of context. Dozens of redefinitions being done by them. The various parable Matthew 25 is being redefined into something else. Matthew chapter 22 is being redefined and a new meaning is applied to the text which is foreign to the, um, uh, um, to the Bible according to what Dr. Walter Martin is saying in his book. And I say this to say because when we are doing our discussion on the law and the covenants and the sabbaths and so forth you are going to realize that they will be doing the exact same thing and from henceforth in my dealings with other cults which I will deal with after I finish with Adventists you are going to find the same thing from every one of them taking texts out of context and redefining terms that are in, that, 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 that are in the Bible now, my viewers, I do thank you for having listened to this video. I do hope that you enjoyed this video, right? And um, once again, thank you for, 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 for the patience in having journeyed with me thus far. For, from henceforth, my channel is going to get even more exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe to my channel, comment where necessary, right? Click the bell icon so that you can receive notifications whenever I make new uploads. And last but not least, share this video with whom you know will benefit from a video like this. Bye bye now.